Now let's talk a bit about some particular courses and what it takes to graduate. I'm going to start by talking about math classes. There are two ways we place you into math. You can either place based on previous college credit or based on the math placement exam. If you've got credit that you're transferring in from another college, then what you're going to do is pick up where you left off with math when you get here. So the three steps are algebra, pre-calculus, and calculus. If you already have credit, college credit for algebra, then you'll start with our pre-calculus class and continue with calculus. If you've already done pre-calculus, you'll start with calculus. Now there's a little twist here for those of you who have attended Virginia Community College classes. The usual combination of classes that we see most often coming to VCU are Math 163 and Math 270. Together, those two classes will substitute for our math sequence. But you do need to be aware that if you've only done Math 163, you will be starting over with pre-calculus here at VCU and then continuing on to calculus. Now, let's say you've already got college credit for calculus. In that case, your math is probably finished. There are a couple of exceptions. If you're in our financial technology program, as I said, that's a math intensive program and you'll have plenty more math to take. If you're in information systems, there is another math class that you'll take, which is mathematical structures. Now, what about taking the math placement test? If you're taking the math placement test, you want to be sure and do that before you arrive on campus. You will get your results, and um, I want to tell you now how to interpret those results. If it told you you placed into Math 001, we want you to register for Math 141, and you'll register for a stretch section of Math. The stretch section has the same content, and you get the same credit as you would for any other section of Math 141. It's just that you have more contact hours with a professor. The logic here is that if you placed at this level, we're a little bit concerned about just throwing you into an algebra class um, without some extra help. So this is our way of making sure that you're going to have access to the resources you need to be successful. If you, plas if you place into Math 131, I want you to register for Math 141. That's also an algebra sequence. It's just a slightly different sequence. If you placed into a stretch section, the math department will not let you register for a regular section. And if you placed into a regular section, likewise, you won't be allowed to register for a stretch section. In particular, if you need to register for a stretch section, make sure that your advisor secures an override for you to get into one of those sections when you meet one-on-one. -on -one. Now, continuing, if you placed into Math 151, you'll sign up for Management 171. That's a business version of a pre-calculus class. And if you placed into Math 200, you have a choice. You can do a standard calculus class. In our case, it's Math 200. Or you can take Management 212, which is business applications of calculus. Either one will count in our program. If you have um, any uncertainty about staying in business, if you are perhaps thinking you might end up in engineering or you might end up in a pre-med program, I recommend that you go ahead and take Math 200 because that is a class that will be recognized in those programs and it will give you more flexibility. If you're pretty confident that you'll be studying business, I would register for Management 212. Now, a couple notes about our courses. In economics, here at VCU, our first course is micro and our second course is macro. At community colleges, at least in Virginia, that order is traditionally reversed. Students usually do macro before they do micro. Now, I mentioned I'm an economics professor. I can tell you with authority that it really doesn't matter which order you take the courses in. What matters a bit more is that the professor teaching the course has an idea of what the students are already expected to know. 
So when you come on campus, be very careful as you, as you choose an economics class to make sure you're choosing the class you do not already have credit in. If you go to your advisor and say something along the lines of, I took the first course, but um, I, now I need to take the second course, you're going to end up in the wrong class. And you'll end up repeating a class and paying for it unnecessarily. With accounting, life is a lot simpler. Our topics follow the same order in community college that they follow here at VCU. Now I want to explain something unusual that you might see on your transcripts. Here at VCU, if you had started as a freshman, you would be required to take three of our composition classes. They're called Focused Inquiry 1 and 2, that's Univ 111 and 112. And the third one is um, Focused Inquiry Writing. Now, most of you will have come out of a program that would have required only two of these classes, not three. To allow for a smooth transfer, when you get here, we're going to put three lines on your transcript that represent the two courses you took. So if you took two courses, you'll see Univ 111 listed with zero credits, plus you'll see another two lines, Univ 112 with three, and Univ 200 with three. So you took six credits, and you're going to get six credits here, and we don't require you to do the extra three credits here. Now another special class that I want you to be aware of is Info 202. This is Introduction to E-Business Technologies. This is a class that's only required for information systems majors. But if you do think you're going to be an information systems major, you want to be sure to either take that class right away or to meet with an information systems representative and determine that they can waive that requirement for you. The Info 202 class is a prerequisite for all of the other classes in the information systems curriculum. So you definitely want to get a handle on that class, either get the requirement waived or take it right away. Interestingly enough, you don't have to have college credit in order to get this requirement waived. If you have significant credit programming as a hobby or as a job experience, when you discuss this with the information systems faculty, they might well decide that this is a class that you can skip. Now, what does it take overall to graduate? Our programs take 120 credits. 63 are in the foundation program, 30 are in the advanced core, and 27 in the major. On average, then, over the course of a whole bachelor's degree, you would take 15 credit hours a semester in order to graduate in four years. So if you're coming here with a two-year degree, then you'll want to plan on taking 15 credits every semester in order to graduate with an additional two years. <laughs> 